What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about how to get involved in karting. Karting is a very strange sport. It's not a sport that you normally do as a kid. It's not a sport that your parents sign you up to do on the weekend like they would with basketball or soccer or baseball. It's a sport that if you really don't know somebody who's already in the sport, you probably will have never gotten introduced to it. Also, it's very important to get the right start in karting. Because it is such a big financial investment, you want to make sure you're making the right moves and buying the right equipment. So in today's video, I'm going to go over step by step what actions to take to get involved in karting. So step number one, let's say you have a passion for racing, you've played iRacing, you've played video games, and you're ready to make that next step into professional go-karting. So step number one is going to be go on Google and search what tracks are in your area. It's a pretty simple step, but a lot of guys, you know, don't even know where to start or where to even look to buy a go-kart. The next part of that step is to ask them if they rent go-karts out. I'm not talking about the rental carts that have the big bumpers on the sides. I'm talking about if they rent real go-karts. If they do, that's great. You know, get a hold of them, see how much it costs to drive them, and spend a day out there, you know, practicing and seeing if you really enjoy the sport. If the track itself doesn't rent carts, um, see if they can refer you to the nearest racing team because they will probably have some carts laying around that they could throw together to help get you a good start into the sport. So now you've found your local racetrack, you've driven a go-kart, and now you want to take that next step and buy your own cart. So what I suggest for this step is to contact your local car track and see if they sell carts or see if they can refer you to a racing team that sells carts. Now the mistake that most people make is they'll buy a brand new cart or they'll buy a used cart but a really really old used cart. This is a mistake that a lot of people make because this is the first investment into the sport. You don't want to get a cart that's super old and that you can't really race in many series or a cart that's super new that you're just going to beat up and it ends up becoming a waste of an investment. So what you're going to want to do is buy a used cart that's around $2,000 to $3,500. If you look for a cart in this price range, it shouldn't be too beat up and it should be new enough that you can race it and still be competitive in the go-kart. You don't need a new cart for your first cart. This is something that's going to be for training and just a learning tool. So you really don't need something that you're just going to beat up and really you won't get the investment back once you've bought the go-kart. And if you want to get into a gearbox class, you're looking for a cart that's about $3,000 to $4,500. The only other thing I'll say about buying a go-kart is make sure you know your local team or your local cart shop can support it. A lot of guys will buy carts that their cart shop can't support and it makes it a hassle when you crash or any other thing because you have to buy parts in bulk or it just takes a really long time to get your cart back together, which will obviously just make the experience way less enjoyable. So make sure you buy a cart that a local team or the track supports. So now you've bought your cart. This moves us on to step three. You have to buy the engine. This is a big mistake that a lot of guys do. They buy just whatever engine the cart shop will sell them. That's all right in some cases, but sometimes you'll get stuck only being able to run the local series that the track supports, and you won't be able to do anything outside of this track. So right now, the two main engine suppliers in North America are the Rock engines and the IAMI engines. If you're a beginner and you just want to learn how to drive while having a little bit of speed, I'd suggest getting a IAMI KA100 or a Rock VLR. These engines go for about $2,400 brand new and they're really good and useful to learn on. They have a good amount of power and the racing is always competitive and the classes are really strong. So if you're looking to get a good start and get a good competitive engine that you can race against quite a few guys, I'd suggest getting the KA or the VLR. Now if you want to go kart with a little more power that's still a single speed engine, you can move up to the IAMI X30 engine or the Rock GP. These are a bit quicker engines and the classes sometimes are a bit smaller, but they're a lot more competitive, and that's the class that a lot of the top ranking drivers race in. And now if you bought a gearbox chassis, I'd just suggest getting a rock shifter engine. I don't have much experience with it, but when you look around, that engine seems to be the one that the majority of people race, and it seems to be the most popular gearbox engine. Okay, so you've got your go-kart, you've got your engine, now what's next? You gotta get your racing gear. I did a video a few years ago about what's in my bag, you can look at that to get a reference of what I've taken to races with me, but you're gonna need a helmet. I'd suggest getting a bell helmet. They have quite a few to choose from. They have some that are already painted and some that are just black or carbon fiber. These helmets are relatively cheap, but they look really good and they're gonna protect you as much as you need when you're out there. Number two is getting a racing suit. I would just go on saferacer.com. This site can probably support all your racing needs. So go on there, look through their racing suits, and pick one out that you think would work for you. 
Obviously you wanna look for the carting suits because they have that extra layer of material that helps if you were to fall out of a cart that you obviously wouldn't need when you're driving a race car. You also want a rib protector. This is something that some people don't know you need when you get into the sport. Your ribs are gonna hurt for a while when you start to learn how to drive. It is a rough ride. There are no seat belts, there's no padding. So this is something you really wanna get and protect your ribs. You wanna get a pair of gloves. The ones I recommend are from minus 273. They're a really light glove. They give you a lot of control of the steering wheel while staying cheap and affordable. And last but not least, you need to get a set of racing shoes. You can use tennis shoes, you can use closed toed shoes, but the tread in the shoes make it really difficult to feel the pedals. You wanna get a nice flat shoe that'll give you a nice sensation of the pedals. So now that you have all your gear ready, you need to go out and practice. I don't suggest that your first experience in a go-kart be a race. Some guys only drive the go-kart at races. That's when they learn. You need to take some time to go to the track and practice. For me, I didn't really leave my home track that much to race in my first year. I did a few races and basically just got beat and more confused on what to do when I'm racing. So I just suggest for the time being, stay local, take some time to really learn the sport, learn how to be comfortable in a go-kart, and just to improve overall so that when you go to the races, it's way less discouraging. You also might wanna hire a coach if they have one, just to kinda of get you going in the right direction, make sure you're doing the right things, and make sure your cart's set up correctly. This should only cost you a few hundred bucks. You know, you don't need the world's best, but it would help if you get somebody just to give you some advice on where to go and how to drive. Now that you've done all your practice, you wanna go race in an actual series. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. They go race these big national series, even though they don't have enough experience to race it, and generally they just get discouraged, and it makes the sport way less enjoyable. Now that you have a little more experience in the sport, talk to your track or local team if they have any idea what series are in your area. But for the most part, in your first year or so of racing, I'd suggest staying local, staying in your state, try and find a good state series that runs, or a good little regional series. Only do stuff that you can drive to and that will make it just a little bit easier and better financially for you. So that's it, that's how you get involved in go-karting. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to message me and I'll try and fill you in on any gaps that I might have left out. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. You guys have been giving me so much support over the past month and I really appreciate it. Make sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm also gonna link all this stuff in the description below. So I'll give you guys a few sites to go to just to help get you a head start on this process. Again, thank you guys for watching. See you guys at the next one.